Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yeah, today I'm playing Arcadia Quest, which I recently found out that there is an official solo variant provided by Simon Games, so I really very much appreciate that. And what I also appreciate is that a very kind viewer, I cannot even express how kind, gifted me a ton of games. Really great games like Arcadia Quest and not just the base game. There is Inferno, there is I think Beyond the Grave and so on. The Pets expansion, some mounts, really a ton of stuff next to other things. I cannot even yeah express how thankful I am. So Jolene, this is for you. Thanks so much for this kind gift. And I believe this is the first game I'm from that collection I'm featuring on my channel. There is or there are many more to come, rest assured. And yeah, today I'm starting with Arcadia Quest, which I think this is the base game. And I will play the campaign of the base game. And depending on the interest, I will keep playing. So for today, I will simply play the, let's call it introductory scenario, the rel relatively easy first scenario. And yeah, if you like what you are seeing, let me know and I will continue my campaign, which I believe consists of six missions in total, three in the outer ring, two in the middle ring, and then there is this final end boss scenario, which we have to play through. So yeah, let me know what you think. I already prepared the party. So we have Maya, who may exhaust each magic attack attack card twice, which is really, really huge. And also the main reason why I only gave her one of our starting equipment here, the Nova Bolt. We have Scarlet, the backstabby kind of rogue character. She rolls one extra die when she's attacking a flanked target target with at least one other enemy close to that. I think this is or her special ability may be a little bit more useful in a multiplayer game because it's really a PvP game with PvE elements, which I think works pretty well in this one, but I still like her a lot. And last but not least, we have Grom, basically the Conan character who rolls one extra die in case he is wounded. And that's basically the idea. I would give, want to give him at least one wound in order to have him hit harder. The scenario we are playing today, or the first scenario we are playing today, is the District of Hammers, which I already set out here, but let's do some reading. So this is basically the scenario map in this scenario. And as mentioned, this is the first scenario in the outer circle. Once marked by ringing hammers and belching forges, the District of Hammers has fallen silent under Lord Feng's invasion. Not because Lord Feng's minions don't need weapons, but mostly because they can figure out the instructions. Ancient Dwarven is written phonetically, you see, and pronouncing a Dwarven accent is fraught with danger for anyone except a true Dwarf. The spittle alone can quench a furnace if done improperly. And yet, the monsters labor long hours to decode the instructions and forge mighty weapons of their very own. They even have examples of the fine work these forges are capable of in two of the grandest hammers ever conceived. If they could just reverse engineer them, who knew what reverse engineering was? And that's basically what we are trying to achieve in this scenario is to, first of all, find the lost weapons, collect one quest token. And this grants us the reward card here, which is the Skullcracker in this case, which definitely is a good weapon. I own it in my multiplayer campaign, which I'm currently playing with the family. Really great, great asset. And on top of this, we also have to kill three monsters, which we have to do anyway in order to get to those weapons. So yeah, I think that goes without saying. As we are playing the solo mode, obviously we won't have any PvP uh, missions here, which basically means we are completely ignoring those. So in this instance, we only have those two PvE encounters here. Find the lost weapons. We can only find one, obviously. So we have one Skullcracker available. At least I think that's typically the case for the multiplayer case I definitely do think it also is the same here and the second one here we have to kill three monsters in order to be successful in a solo game we are ignoring the first bonus here but we will still collect the coins for completing those and in order to win this scenario we have to complete them both anyway but winning or losing we will continue with our campaign if we're losing a scenario this means we are drawing less of those upgrade cards that is and apart from that we will keep 
going. So, which is definitely something I do like, as I really do not like repetitions in a game like this. One of the reasons why I hate time stories is because of this repetitive character. The first time it's really great, you're exploring this stuff. Typically you have to go in a second, maybe third, fourth time. I think if you're playing fourth and you're playing definitely things um, very inefficiently, that is. And, but already with the second time, I really getting bored and I, I, I really hate to game or optimize games like this. I want to explore stuff which I do like and then yeah, I want to live with my consequences here. But we are not talking about time stories, we are talking about Arcadia Quest today. I have to start in the area of player one, so I cannot choose in this case here our three heroes up there. I decided that Maya and Grom will start next to the door here. Let's see how this works out. And the two weapons are actually here and here. Most likely I will go for the one that is nearest, depending a little bit how those monsters are moving, which is I think the main difference to the multiplayer game in this um, version of the game with the solo mode, there is an actual monster turn, which is not the case in a multiplayer game, which I think Think was very cleverly designed the way how these monsters will react to the heroes and so you really have a relatively low amount of overhead in respect to those monsters in multiplayer that is but still you have to think your way through how you're getting by whatever a monster here without triggering too many attacks for example so really clever done in this case I think it's getting a little bit more random because we have a deck of activation cards now and we will roll some dice to see who is going to or getting activated first. But that's basically what I was trying to get to is um, depending on how these monsters will move later on, we might end up and say, oh, I think maybe that's the better deal, for example. But yeah, let's see how things go. I will always go first and I will always activate all my heroes. Um, I can activate them or I can go for a rest turn like in the normal game. So then I will basically heal or not heal. Um, recover all of my heroes and they will then unexhaust their items and spells and whatnot or I will again activate all of them and then we will see an actual monster turn. So let's see, um, maybe let's have a quick look at the two monsters we have in this scenario mm, because we don't have enough miniatures for the orc marauder and um, we are also using the orc captain here um, like this one with the sword but they still count as an orc marauder we are still in level one which is why we are only using the level one cards here um so they have two and one hit point each and um, basically this is the overkill value which i will explain when I get there. By the way, I didn't paint those lovely figures. This was also done by Julene and she really did an amazing job. I really love those minis, how they are painted really, really nicely done and which also motivated me to get me back to painting. So I painted my copy of Edge of Darkness which was also gifted by her, by the way, which I will most likely also cover on my channel in some, at some point in time. But okay then, let's start our turn. We will start with Grom, who gets three movement points. With our first movement point, we are opening this door. And this is very much zombie side style in respect to those movement. Everything else is really different, but all these map tiles, all the movement rules and so on, very much remind me of zombie side. But apart from that, it's a different game. So that was the first movement point. With the second movement point, we are moving in here. Right now, we are now in the danger zone. So if I would now move out of a close, and close also me always means orthogonally adjacent to a monster. This is not orthogonally adjacent because there is a wall. So this monster cannot see this monster and can't see me. But again, if I would move out either closer to him or closer out here, then this monster would activate. But right now, I think there is no reason to do that. I simply want to attack that orc here. So let's turn him over. So it's time to use our rusty plate. You can use all your items basically once per, let's say, turn or per round, unless you have decided to, or a round ends basically for you when you are deciding to rest, then you are allowed to remove those tokens here. And I believe these are faction tokens from an expansion faction. I believe these do not come with a base game. Might be completely wrong, 
but I believe they are part of some expansion which I haven't figured out yet. So we are using our rusty plate, which allows me to roll three attack dice. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, unfortunately, Grom is not yet wounded, so we are not getting any bonus dice at this point in time. So it's time to roll our first dice. I think we can do that here, maybe here. Let's do it like this. Typically, those minion monsters, the minor minions, do not roll any uh, defensive dice. So our, let's say, minimum goal here is to roll two hits in order to kill him. Um, because combat is basically simultaneous, if I don't do enough hits to reach the overkill value here, so if I go for three hits, then this Orc Marauder will not will not have a chance to hit me back. If I only roll order zero to two successes or hits in this case, then they will basically hit me back for three dice in this case. So yeah, let's hope for the best. And I promise to speed things up as I go, but I want to explain you the game as I go, obviously. Obviously, most of you might know the game. If not, that's why I'm playing the first couple of rounds a little bit slower. And yeah, I'm not using any cock dice rules for me. That's a total valid success, which means this fella in theory is dead. But as I explained already, this was not the overkill, which again is free. He gets to hit me back with three dice. So we are using three dice here and I'm rolling one and two defensive dice. And here it doesn't really matter if this parrying blade has been exhausted or not. I still get the defensive value here. So we are rolling two of those defense dice, which are much weaker than our attack dice. And I think we should be able to roll these together. Uh, this was, I think, bad in theory. This was, um, I think, yeah, well, no, it was the same result. I think I need to see where I continue or roll those dice in future. But overall, I think we are in a very good shape. So this is a melee hit. This is a ranged hit. He is doing melee um, damage or melee attack. So we can basically completely ignore those dice. This is a defense which is taking care of this. This is also a defense, but counts as an exploding die. So in theory, I would be allowed to roll an extra defensive die in this case, but there is no point to do that. I don't get anything on top of this. So ultimately, I was able to defeat this fella without taking wound. Again, in this case, I would have been okay getting wound because keep in mind, he is getting stronger. Um, so I think I have to put this here because that's basically where this defeated monster will go. Uh, but I think I have to keep that somewhere, somewhere else, maybe on top of the box here. So you have seen this and I will let you know once it's full or so. Okay, that was pretty awesome. In theory, we would have one movement point left, but that's what's not allowed in this game. You can either attack first and then move, or you can move first and then attack, but you cannot mix and match like an Imperial. So he can partially move, do your stuff, and then continue to move. That's not allowed here. So ultimately his turn is over, but still I get to activate my other two heroes, which is also again a big difference to the multiplayer game where you typically activate one of your heroes and then it goes clockwise around the table from there. In this scenario, I get them both. And honestly, I'm thinking about going with Scarlet next. So she's moving one, two, three, moving onto this. I don't know how these are called. And wow, this is amazing. This is a potion which gives her an extra activation, which she can basically use any time. But I think right now there is no point that I'm doing this. No, for now she will simply grab this, put this on her character sheet. And yeah, I think I already made a terrible mistake or not really terrible, but stupid enough from there. She is not able to kill someone or hit someone. She is using her arranged weapons, I mean your ranged weapon like the slingshot and also the life drain spell here, which is also a ranged attack. But because she doesn't have any line of sight to a monster and you count line of sight always here from these central points. So not sure if you can see it. Let me zoom in on another um, space on the map where where you maybe should be able to see this little star here. So you always count from this star to another star up here. So from here to here, 
this would be a complete um, line of sight. This is allowed because this space is not full and yeah, there are slow routes blocked and full and whatnot, but in this case, it's not full. So I would have been allowed to hit it. Obviously, this goblin is behind a wall here, which means I cannot hit it either. And over here, we have an open doorway, um, but I'm relatively certain that um, my line, we yeah, will walk me through this wall here so I'm also not able to hit anyone here so in theory I could now again spend this potion to go again but right now there is no point doing that so I think I will leave her be and it seems I have lost my base why am I not seeing this right away <laughs> so it's here but as I'm playing alone again it doesn't really matter too much and then last but not least it's Maya and yeah she has her Nova bolt and I think she can hit an Orc Marauder so maybe let her move out I don't know one two speed Space is here or no let's do only one space here i think this is enough so this was her movement and the idea is to hit this fella down here so maybe let's also turn him into the appropriate direction again the only thing that matters for a ranged attack is line of sight there's nothing like range or whatnot if you can hit the target or see the target then you can hit it with a ranged attack so yeah let's totally do that so she is using her nova bolt and good thing about her special ability is she can use her cards twice before she has to rest that's the main reason why i only gave her one spell for now this will most likely change in let's say upcoming scenarios once i get more stuff but for now i think that's a good starting position for her. this allows her to roll two ranged attack dice and again this is the attack here again they don't roll any defensive dice but in this case we are looking for those ranged symbols which are i think only twice on this one here but we always have the exploding one which counts for both kinds of attacks the sword is on here three times plus the exploding one though it's much easier to hit someone with a melee attack so let's see about that so we are rolling two dice and yeah that's a complete whiff um in theory the orc would be allowed to um hit us back and in a normal scenario um basically as a reaction um they would move or they would be allowed to move toward me but that's not, not what they are doing in this solo scenario here because they are now moving independent of us because again in the multiplayer game the only time monsters are getting activated is through um let's say hero activations but this is not the case in solo mode in this case and i think one thing i almost forgot of course i have killed my first monster wow i'm really stupid for every monster you kill you get one coin here and of course let's also not forget to put our little tracker on the first killed a monster here again these are not part of the base game but i'm using those little chunks here they look really really nice again once we have completed this um, we are basically moving it i think it's down here or whatever we will see that but we have basically one third completed on this one here nice and we have gained one coin that's definitely not nothing okay but that's basically our activation and then we are checking for monster activation the way how this works is we are looking at those spawn tokens here also something which very much reminds me of zombie side and we are rolling basically those two dice to define from which spawn point we are starting and um, we are always going with the closest monster from there there is Basically, one exception, we, you see this little, I think it's a llama or so. Um, these are basically faction tokens from another faction or from another guild. And these are guard tokens, which means these folks will never leave their position because obviously they're guarding those objectives here. Once they're killed, then they start behaving like normal monsters. But as long as they're there, they will not move. Okay, let's see which spawn point we are using. Here we have the two bow ones is that spawn token out so here is bow and exploding actually i don't think there is right we have two swords bow and sword and there's this and i hear up here there is sword no this is not out so we are rolling we have only four spawn tokens in this scenario but i think there are five in total so that's bow and sword which means we are starting from this 
spawn point here. Okay, let's see. So then we are drawing our first monster activation card and this deck is basically built from all the other remaining mm, monsters of those types, but from other levels. So in theory, we don't really care about the level here. It's only saying, okay, we are now activating an Orc Marauder and we will go for the first or oh, the closest one to that spawn point here. This doesn't move. So one, two, one, two, one, uh, one, two. So in this case, we can decide if we want to activate him or him. And I think in this case, I want this gangway free. So I think we are activating him and he will move one, two, three spaces closer to us. And that was the main reason why I didn't move Maya one step further, because now he would have been in the position to hit us. In this case, that's not gonna happen. I like that. So he's a melee monster, which means his activation ends, but we are always activating two monsters. And again, we are starting always from this spawn point here. Though this die roll happens only once, per monster activation, um, but we are drawing two cards. So in this case, we have a goblin archer. The closest goblin archer from this one, yeah, he will be able to hit us in the end. So we can either go for this or that. In this case, it doesn't really matter. They will use one movement point to open doors, something they would never do in the multiplayer mode. And then they're moving one two spaces over here as close as they need to move, not any further, and then they will basically hit us. Same rules apply. We do not care about range for those guys. Um, so they will be able to hit us. And in this case, they're rolling two ranged attack dice. It's the same attack dice, but they are looking for ranged hit symbols here. And in this case, they would try to hit the hero who has the most wounds just to get us down, because that's maybe something I should have explained. The way how we are losing our scenario is dependent on how many heroes have died. And I have decided to go on the medium level of the game, which in this case means um, we can basically suck up up to three deaths. So if we're hitting three deaths, then we have basically lost the game. In legendary mode, one death would be basically enough. Two death is hard. So I think the medium level is okay for this instance and hopefully beatable. So that's why they're always going for the heroes who have the most amount of wounds. In this case, both heroes are even tight in respect to their base wounds. So I would have, there is nothing specifically mentioned in the rules, but the way I understand those rules, how they are written, is that they must always be activated to the best of their ability, utilizing rerolls, crits, abilities, portal stores, any facts to their best capacity. They must move um, basically to the best of their capacity to which may include portals. So I still think I would play them like a normal player. So um, in this case, maybe I would, ah, it's both interesting. So in this case, I do see that Grom is rolling two defense dice. And he also gets a bonus based on if he's wounded or not. So I think a human player would totally decide now to go after Maya, who is an easier target and also doesn't gain anything from being wounded. So I think in this case, let's play it as mean as possible. So we will try to hit Maya. So we'll not try to gain the game too much in this case. Let's simply roll some dice, shall we? Okay, so it's two dice versus one defense die in this case. Um, let's see. And that's okay. I take that to melee hits, which do, which do not do anything. And yeah, we also not defended anything, but that's fully okay. But ultimately, this ends our monster activation. So it's back to our heroes. And again, I have the choice if I want to go to, through a normal hero activation or if I want to rest. Again, resting would allow me to rearrange my items here. Even this potion, for example, I could or oh, I would be allowed to remove those exhaustion tokens. But I think right now we can still go for another round, right? And I guess we definitely do want to get rid of either this fella or that fella here right now. The thing is, this space is full, so I cannot move another hero in here. Each of those spaces can only take one hero. I can still move through, that's fine. At least through spaces where I have at least one of my minis in there. 
so friendly or allied heroes or what they are or miniatures we refer to so in theory i could move her one two three but again if i would move out of here yeah, her position is really really bad i could use the teleport though this could be an idea or maybe i should do that that's actually very good so i will start with scarlet so for a first movement point she will dump jump down here and the way i understand it i think i have to immediately reveal this token here. i don't have to end my movement here because i will continue to move but i have to leave it out and that's basically two treasures at the end of the scenario i will take that but right now she is carrying this again a little bit more important for the multiplayer mode than in the solo mode i can still lose it if i die or getting exhausted but in this case she has to carry it we have one more movement point left and then with her slingshot um she is basically rolling two ranged attack dice and will try to hit that goblin the thing is the goblin will hit back that's now a problem because he is also ranged but that's fine we are looking for one hit i believe only and the overkill you might see that here is two Okay, that's one hit. I take that. So this is one hit. We are rolling basically an extra die. We have really, that's a whole bunch of dice in this bag. So we are rolling one more. Awesome. This is basically the overkill we needed. One, two. And again, we needed two. This time I will not forget. We have basically collected another coin. This goblin is not able to hit us back. It goes on to the second space of this spawn bar here and of course we are taking one of our little sharks and putting it over here so one more enemy to go then we have fulfilled this first scenario here which is nice but we still need to get to either of those here and we still have to defeat one of those guards here but nice this was a scarlet activation that was really a great attack nicely done then i will continue with grom yeah let's move him up one space in here again i could move in here but this would trigger his immediate um attack ability this is his, i think the guard reaction is referred to but there is no point in doing that i'm basically adjacent i can use my parrying blade now unfortunately this only gives me two dice in this case and in this case we do need at least two successes good thing is uh, wounds stick around um so let's say i only hit him once he will still end up with one wound token which I think is good. And okay, we have one wound, but it's an exploding die, which means we get to roll again. Ah, you kidding me? Mm, that wasn't great. So this orc is wounded, and the problem is he's now adjacent to us, so he will hit us back also with three dice in this case, and we are still rolling two defense dice in this case. Let's see. Yeah, that wasn't pretty at all. Um, so these are three hits. Um, the exploding guys do count for the monsters too, of course. And okay, that's at least something. We negated one, which means Grom is taking two wounds. So now he counts as being wounded. So he's rolling one more attack dice. But that was basically his turn. Last but not least, we have Maya. And there is no point in not using her Nova Bolt again to hopefully inflict a one missing damage in this case yeah let's do that and okay ah whew. not sure if you're able to see that but that was basically one bow so this orc is dead keep in mind he only needs two wounds to be defeated in theory he would try to attack me back but he can't because in this solo mode he's not allowed to move towards me so he's simply dead and he's not hitting grom because she was the aggressor in this case we are putting this onto the board we are getting one extra coin for killing that but what's more important we have placed our third shark onto this pve objective here so again in a multiplayer mode the first player to achieve that would gain a first bonus basically an extra coin and then one coin at the end of the scenario in solo we are always first and that's why we are only getting this end of scenario coin but which is another coin in this case which we might use to buy some useful stuff nice okay then let's go for the monster activation they all went yeah, yeah exactly 
Okay, so let's roll with spawn point. So it's the star and the arrow, which is this spawn point here. So it's most likely that those two fellas down here are going to activate, which I think is not a bad thing in this case. On the other hand, yeah, we have Scarlet here. So she is at least vulnerable for this guy here. But okay, let's see about that. Let's draw our activation card. The first one, that's an Orc Marauder. In this case, it's clear this Orc Marauder will move one, two, three spaces closer to him, I think. Yeah, I think she counts as being close again. They're also using teleportation points, but in this case, I think this is not enough to reach me. I take that. Second activation, yeah, of course, this is the Goblin Archer. He will move in here. He doesn't need to move any further, so we are not making the lives for, let's say, our melee characters easier. So they will now basically hit her. So it's one... Oh, did I play that correctly? Oh, I think, no, she wasn't attacked before because she is rolling an incredible three defense dice just for her basic ability, but he also only has three hit points. Okay, then we have two here. I think we can leave it here, right? Um, We have two dice here. And again, she's rolling three defense dice. So let's see what comes out of this. Okay, so we have one hit, but also one defense. So we are not taking any wounds. So I think that was an okay round as well. Moving back to our heroes. And yeah, in theory, they could still move around. They could still, yeah, Basically, she could still go for a life drain attack, which is still two attack dice. Oh, but uh, that's a good point. There are reasons actually to do both right now. So, but I still think we might want to go for a rest turn. Rest simply means we are removing this, this, and that. I can rearrange equipment and all these flasks. I think for now the treasure is good with Maya, but I want to give this one maybe to Grom because he is now kind of our tank. So in theory he can hit twice and he's rolling an extra die for both of his weapons here, which might come in handy. Yeah, let's do that. But that's basically already the end of our hero's turn. Back to the monsters. Again, we are rolling for the spawn point, and that's the star and the sword, which is basically over here, actually. So those two fellas, or oh, this spawn point will activate. So, so far, I think it was always even, and I think it will remain that way because there are basically the same amount of cards in this deck. So this is an Orc Marauder. He will move three space, and I think the closest one should be Maya. One, two, and three. And we know this is an archer, so we are moving in here. And he is able to hit Maya as well, also with two attack dice. I think we can do that down here. She's rolling only one defense die, so that's kind of a bummer. And, but that's okay in my book. So two melee symbols we didn't defend anyway, but I take that nicely done. So we have used all our um, activation cards. We will reshuffle that deck now. And I think I will do the more shuffling off camera, but it's basically back to our heroes who are fully, let's say, not healed, but yeah, refreshed themselves so they can use their weapons and whatnot. Okay, back to our heroes. And I think I want to get rid of this orc here because then I could open the door maybe with my next thing. There are two exploration tokens here. There are traps underneath, so this could be bad. The thing is, keep in mind, um, those fellas, um, in a normal multiplayer game, I wouldn't be concerned about those, but here they can open doors when they are getting activated. And there is one spawn point right next there. But I'd still take my chance. So I'm moving in here one. It's a trap, of course, which means we are giving him one more wound. He can still take one more before he's getting defeated, but this one is basically out of here. Two and three. Let's see. And that's three gold for him. Are you kidding me? Now that's really nice. The problem now really is, now he definitely wants to attack this fella, right? That was the whole plan, but I was not counting on a trap, but these things do happen. So again, he's using his rusty blade and because he's wounded, he gets an extra die. So in this case, he's rolling 
four attack dice. That's not nothing, but let's see if that's enough. We need three wounds in order not to get a counter attack, basically. How about zero? Are you kidding me? That's really the worst, kind of the worst result. Zero wounds would have been worse, but that's still pretty bad. Yeah, so um, this orc is taking one hit, hooray. Um, but then he's hitting us back with three dice and he's rolling two defense dice still, right? Yeah, he has his parrying blade. Oh, that could be the end of Grom. Okay, I have to reroll this and I think that's okay. I take that. Oh, that was so frustrating. That was not enough. Are you kidding me? So I think I was really thinking if I would have been able to kill him to use his potion to get an extra turn basically and then he would be able to open that door and start hitting this monster. But I think in this case, let's not do that. Let's continue with Maya. Yeah, let's do that. One, two. She could remain here because she is able to see him. It doesn't really change a whole lot, right? Because he's here. He could hit us anyway. Let's leave her here. That's fine. So I think we can clearly see um, the center to center in this case. She is using her Nova Bowl, which allows her to roll two ranged attack dice. And yeah, the good thing, if I would have moved her here, um, he would be able to hit me back. No, I think that's the perfect position for her. Okay, let's see. Are oh, you kidding me? Mm, two melee attack. My normal die flag is back. Now that's pretty crappy actually. Mm, we still have Scarlet. Mm, she could move one, two, three, and I think from here hmm, I have to really I think I'm not able to see that. I think we are hitting that corner. And yeah. Um, we are just, I think, one millimeter or so we are cutting through that corner. I really um, measured it. I, I have a laser thing up somewhere, but I couldn't find it. In a game like this, this is invaluable, but I think I have to. If I want to hit him, one, two, three spaces. I think let's do that then. So one and two, we have to reveal that. That's, wow, four coins. Are you kidding me? Really riches here. Then we are moving in here. Here and then from there she's using her slingshot right yeah because she doesn't need to heal yeah so it's two dice anyway so in this case we can might as well go for the slingshot so let's not use those two dice let's choose two fresh dice and that's how you do that it's still not enough for an overkill unfortunately um so and you don't really count what, what's in there. You really have to do reach this overkill value basically with your roll. Um, so it's not counting. Hey, we already had one wound. That doesn't count. It's that. So that's at least the good thing. But he will basically come. No, wait a second. I think they're not moving. But yes, they do. I think I misread or misinterpreted this section here. Um, it says basically before after moving the hero may attempt to attack blah, blah 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 attack is also unchanged and monsters still get payback and guard reactions normally using the stats listed on their respective monster card for the live on reactions monsters do not get three movement points I read this um, basically bold not that they're not getting any movement points but no they're only just not getting the three movement points on there they still get their normal movement value so I think I have at least misplayed that once before i think it wasn't game breaking at least i hope but in this case this monster will move one space up in this case and will try to hit poor scarlet here of course otherwise they would really feel very very weak and honestly i prefer it this way so good that i caught this during my very first scenario rather than whatever three scenarios in <laughs> so okay let's hit poor scarlet so he's rolling her three attack dice is not nothing actually and she's roll but she's rolling three in her defense but she only also only has three hit points 
And ooh, yeah, I mean, that's an okay roll, I guess. So she takes one damage, but could have been much worse. But of course, one out of three is also, yeah, definitely something to worry about. But yeah, this orc is no more. It's the fourth monster we killed. And they basically do respawn when this is full, but they do not do that at the end of a hero activation. They do that basically at the start of the monster turn. But let's not forget to award ourselves our fourth coin in here nice okay that was really nice i think yeah these were all our activations i mean we are in an okay spot here the only thing that's a little bit worrying me is poor grom here again we are playing on medium level so we can suck up three defeats in this case and they do come back um, so when we go for a rest, then they, we can basically decide that they come back. But yeah, it's really not easy, actually. But that's basically our turn. We will go back to the monster activation. So let's roll the dice. And honestly, so far, I must say, I really do like the solo mode. I think it works pretty well. This is a very basic scenario, of course, so not a lot going on. So I think this will be more... <laughs> of course, it had to be this it had to be this mm -hmm. okay let's see we are drawing our first card here it's a goblin archer we can i think decide if it's this or that who do i prefer hmm. i think they will hit poor grom anyway right so it doesn't really matter right so i guess let's simply start with this guy here so he will open the door he will not move any further will still or simply attack poor Grom here with two attack dice versus two defense dice. That's at least something. But yeah, okay. Ah, you're kidding me. Mm, that's another hit. And yeah, I think there are only two symbols on these dice. One exploding and one shield, by the way. He is not quite dead yet, but this might change any second now, actually, because yeah, I think think no matter hmm, let's see about that this could be okay but it's an orc marauder now we do have to count from this here basically and only orthogonally one two three four one two three this fella will activate can you use the portal here somewhat one two three one, two, three. No, I think he will move towards Maya, but I think Maya can live with that. So yeah, we will activate this fella here. One, two, three. So poor Maya is getting hit with three dice worth as only one, unfortunately. So this could hurt a little. Um, Let's see. But I guess I think for now she... Oh, that's kind of okay. She is taking a wound, but again, could have been much much worse so right now she's at one and this damage is not carrying over to the campaign if we are getting defeated we will draw uh, what is it penalty cards what are those referred to death curses exactly so those can be pretty nasty actually if we are dying that's the thing so if we keep crumb alive somehow <laughs> we would be okay let's see about that i think these were both activations for the monsters this round so moving back to our heroes and i think we will start with her right one with her second she will open that door and now of course she will stop she will use her life drain so for every hit she is dealing she can basically recover one wound which isn't bad at all but of course we have to hit first and i think yeah we are on this door oh, that's okay i think that's okay so ideally two exploding dice or so this would be nice and these are two hits so the monster is dead so she is allowed to heal one wound so i think that was massively massively important Important actually oh that was so cool and then yeah that was really great he is going to basically get his revenge attack for sure she is rolling three defense dice keep that in mind but at least this fella is no more and yeah I think we are okay I think we are okay so we get one extra die here um, oh 
I think, did I knock this over? No, I think it's okay. No, it's basically... Wow, amazing. Okay, we are not even taking a wound here. So this fella is dead. Um, we are getting one extra coin. So we are now at five already. Unfortunately, she can no longer continue to move, but that's really not important. We are simply moving Grom over here. He is picking up this objective token which allows us to place our last shark on the find the lost weapons pve quest and this also means we are getting this reward card here which is the skull cracker which we may want to give to grom anyway so it's another melee attack um if this deals a wound your target is dazed you lie him down and then it's not rolling any defense dice which mm, and yeah it would give us one die against heroes we are not fighting any heroes in the solo mode in this case but i still take it i mean it's another weapon which would allow us maybe to give this parrying blade to maybe scarlet so we could move this life drain to maya so that she gets more spells and whatnot but ultimately it's another weapon which we can activate so it will also delay our need for rest nicely done so the scenario immediately ends. It's the same with a multiplayer mode. At least I think it's the same here. Um, so we have basically defeated our two PVE quests up there. Going also in the multiplayer mode, this automatically and immediately ends the scenario. We were victorious. We were able to do this, which means we are getting two of those extra coins, bringing us to seven in total, which isn't bad at all. And before we would, in theory, move to the next chapter in our little campaign, of course, we are removing all those tokens. This is unfortunately gone too, but of course, let's not forget this one here. So we're getting nine more coins. I almost forgot that. Yeah, I think we don't have any tens in this one here. That's a little bit bad, but we are spending those anyway. So here are six and nine more for those tokens. All the others we haven't used are unfortunately lost, but they are fully healed. None of our heroes died or was defeated, which is a good thing. So we are not drawing a curse card again in this very first scenario. It's tough to die. Unless again, you're fighting uh, or in a multiplayer mode, I think it's definitely, it will happen because one of the targets is a PVP in a, in a normal multiplayer game. And we are now getting some rewards, which we can buy actually. So we are checking here, scenario one. Yes, we have won the scenario. Reveal eight upgrade cards plus three cards for every five coins won during the scenario. And then we can basically purchase up to three cards, spending your coins normally. So in theory, eight, three, I think we are drawing, I don't know, basically all of the cards because we are really swimming in money. Yeah, so it's eight plus Three is 11, plus three is 14, plus three is 17 cards in total. Are you kidding me? This could be almost all of the level one cards actually. But the thing is we also only get to buy three of those amazing cards here. I think we definitely do want the Crescent Bow. The basically replacing the Slingshot here. I think we want something expensive because we can only carry over one coin to the next scenario. So going for a three and a one might be a little bit of a waste, unless again, it's the best deal, then we can basically do that. Here we have the grr. Once per attack, you may take one wound to add one die here, for example. That's a permanent ability, which would be perfect actually for Grom that could make sense because if he is wounded he gets an extra die so i think we are going with a grrr for now that's three i think i definitely do want the crescent bow for 10. and here we have some armor the orc pelt and here we have oh the bleeder is also so nice oh the orc beater this is really a level one card are you kidding me it is oh we don't have enough for this right we have 16. Oh, that's bad. Hmm. Rolls one die against orcs and goblins and four dice. Hmm. I think instead of the grr, then we will go for the orc beater. So that's 11. So this is basically another weapon for Grom. And then maybe we give the orc pelt to a hero, maybe to Maya. It's basically two extra dice. That's 16 then, right? 11, 16. I think so. Let's do that. Let's 
do that. So that's basically all our money. That's okay. We can only carry over one to the next round anyway. 16, right? 11 plus 5, 16. Yeah. Amazing. So those get discarded basically. Those other cards, but I think this is really an okay selection for the very first scenario. So we are going into the next scenario relatively strong. I like that. But yeah, that's basically it in respect to my playthrough of Arcadia Quest. Now it's up to you if you want me to continue my journey through Arcadia Quest. We are still doing a scenario from the outer region in there. I think medium and difficult ones. So if you vote or in the comment, also let me know if I should go for a medium or for a difficult one of the scenarios and then I will continue to play. Maybe it will not immediately be the very next playthrough I'm doing. Maybe I will stretch it over some weeks or so, depending a little bit on the feedback I'm giving. If you're so excited for me to continue, then I will of course consider that accordingly. <laughs> and if not, then I will maybe take it a little bit slower. So again, it's basically up to you. And then, yeah, before I forget, another huge, huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there. You guys are amazing. And another thanks to Jolene for gifting this game to the channel. It's really a family favorite or became a family favorite right now. And I must say, I really do like the solo mode too. Let's see how things go. If you want to support my little channel, you don't have to send me board games. <laughs> of course, you it's definitely appreciated, but you can, whatever. You will find my link to Patreon. You can join me directly here on YouTube by joining the join button. There is this thanks button under this video. Like and subscribe. This also helps or leave a comment. And yeah, with that being said, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.